Talk to me. Oh, hey, dude. Wow. <laughs> What's up? Uh, I got my second COVID vaccine today, and I'm you got your sick second COVID dog. vaccine. Yeah, you I got five. the dog? Sick as a dog. I feel like shit right now. <laughs> You're sick as a dog. I don't like that term because I don't think the dog. Because uh, there's a lot of healthy dogs out there. I don't think when I think of a dog, I don't think of sickness. You ever seen a dog run? Point. They're very fast. It's true. I actually don't really know where that term or phrase rather came from. Mm, you're sick as a dog. On a scale from 1 to 10, how sick are you? With 10 being the sickest, the 1 being the not sickest. Uh, I'd say like 6. Just really like nauseous and like dizzy. It, mm. it honestly feels like I skipped my meds or something, but I, I know I didn't. So it was it was the vaccine. But I'm glad I got it though. I, I work on a COVID like call center for my state. So like I know it's worth it. I ju- it just sucks right now. <laughs> Do you also end up telling a lot of people to turn the thing off and back on again? Or is that not um, what you do? So I'm a manager, actually, and a lot of the employees are, like, middle-aged or, like, older and really shitty at technology. So, yeah, actually, it's usually just, like, our software needs turning off and that kind of thing. So, yeah, it, it, I actually do end up dealing with that a lot, too. Hmm. Are you competitive? Hmm. I didn't really, like... Well, I didn't used to be, but I started doing, like content creation and shit this year which sounds really pretentious but i realized like that the numbers care like i care about the numbers way more than i i like used to or more than i thought i would rather and it makes me feel kind of like i don't know i i guess i never really wanted to like be that kind of person i don't know if that makes mm. sense what uh, what kind of content do you create so i'm on tiktok and i <laughs> it's stupid but i run a couple segments uh, one is Confession Booth with Stevie, and the other one is Stevie and the Monster Fuckers. And the second one is very fun. Both are fun, but I like the second one the most. And well, I, I literally the just... Monster Fuckers. Yeah, <laughs> people submit the, their monster crushes, and I rate them on a scale of zero, which is unfuckable, to ten. Uh, oh God, oh God, yes, let me get in there. Uh, and yeah, I, that's my whole shtick is just that uh, I rate monsters. Now, monsters. On the scale of 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 beast to human, where are are they? Because there are some. I mean, are these are these monsters human? Because if bestiality, are the monsters human enough? To, a to consent to sex. Most oh, importantly, oh yeah. So this obviously is a is a huge discourse in the community to where like uh, the the conditions basically has to be that they are like sentient and able to consent like obviously okay um i think that's a good qualification to have oh yeah but then there's still ones like someone submitted the fucking the 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 chameleon from tangled and i'm like i don't care if he's sentient that's a pet that's a pet i feel horrible about that no no, well he's not can he talk can he communicate he can communicate usually in like like pointing and nodding and symbols and like expressions he's like a, a disney character so like he can communicate, but I don't... He, that's a pet. I don't know. I don't know. So, stuff like that, it's kind of, like, blurry. But then it's, like, werewolves. Not technically an animal, but that's, like, a, a human soul, right? That's fuckable. That's fuckable, obviously. I want to talk to you about the numbers thing, because I, you know, look, I'm a content creator as well. I, I, I you know, empathize with that a lot. But mm-hmm. I, I also, I just really have to know, and maybe this will break the illusion here, and you don't want to answer this, but I, I, I just, I need to know. The monster fucking. Is this is this a is this like what percentage of this? Maybe it's not. Maybe the answer to this is not all or nothing here. But what percentage of this is a joke versus you actually want to have sex with a monster? Oh no, I would have sex with a monster. I want to fuck a dragon so bad. <laughs> really, you want to fuck a dragon? I would. I would. No, listen. It, I, I pretend like the whole series is like objective, and this is. This is me judging you for your taste, but it's solely based. It's it's very subjective because the scale that I use is based on how much I personally want to fuck them. 
So I constantly get people very angry at how I rated their crush. Like everyone's mad that I rated the like Nick Wilde from Zootopia. I rated him like a four. I don't want to fuck him. He makes me angry. He's very smug and I think he's a dick. And I don't want to fuck mm. him, but everyone's very angry about that. So yeah, I, I want to fuck monsters. I do. <laughs> mm. What is there a character in the community that is generally rated as the the sort of Maxim's sexiest monster that everyone wants to fuck? Um, there have been a couple. Um, the tall, sexy vampire lady from Resident Evil was up there, and also wildly blue fang from Castlevania. I really wanted to fuck him, and everyone else started acting up too. And that's one of the more animalistic. But people were really into him, mainly because he ended up, like, eating a corrupt priest or something and had a deep voice. And, mm. like, yeah. Uh, also, my community is, like, a bunch of, like, LGBTQ, like, teens and college students. And, like, I really love that. So a lot of us have religious trauma. So that caters very heavily to that taste as well. So is there a monster that... Okay, so you've told me that everyone wants to fuck the guy, the fox from Zootopia, yeah. and you do not. Is there yeah. a monster that you that you want to fuck that everyone else is not interested in? Yeah. Um, oh, what's that bitch? Bill Cipher from Gravity Falls. And the problem... Bill Cipher? No, no, no. I need to explain myself. I know it sounds bad. I need to explain myself. Please. I got into... I got into that fandom in high school. I was very impressionable. And and I was on Tumblr at the time. And Bill Cipher got the Tumblr sexy man treatment. So they just took the character we were given and made, like, horny fan art of him and just made him look like a skinny little twink. And everyone was into him. And, like, I was too. But I'm now realizing that that has given me so much brain rot. I literally do not look at the triangle and see the triangle. I see this sexy little blonde guy who's, like... I don't know, going to choke you or whatever. And so I'm realizing I literally cannot look at that man as he is, which pisses me off because now I'm rewatching the show and I'm like, I don't know if I'd actually fuck this man, but I'm in too deep now. So I really can't take that one but back. It's a triangle. Where I, is anything? What, what's going in? What's going out? What's I, I, I don't even logistically. Well, how would that even work? Well, listen, he's a shapeshifter. He's a shapeshifter. So, so, so you was OK. So but OK. So that doesn't mean so. OK. All right, in your perfect uh, fantasy where you're having sex with Bill Cipher, in what form or, or, is he in? Well, I'm not realizing it kind of falls apart when I have to think about it deeper than that. Usually it says that the... Because the, then you would have you would want to have sex with what, mainly whatever that form is. Or I guess I don't know if you're attracted to his personality, which is intact, whatever, regardless of the form. Oh, evil, horrible personality, but I'm now realizing that I really messed up by rating him that high because... Would the reason I was attracted to him was because of the fan art, but the fan art drew him as a human. Oh, God, I rated a human. I messed up. I messed up. He doesn't count Listen, anymore. Listen, Stevie, 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 before we go, I, I, I have to be honest with you about something. Yeah. I think the reason why your numbers might be low is because um, having sex with monsters, <laughs> a little niche... Oh, of a oh, content it's category. Niche. A no, little I niche. Mean, if I do say so myself. No, you're right. It is. And I'm honestly okay with that niche. Although it is weird because I have been recognized in public. And that does mean that in my favorite coffee shop, a couple people have found me and they go, the monster fucker man. And I'm like, okay. So I've really done this to myself. And I'm really in deep now. So, like, I might as well embrace it, even if I'm not going to be, like, crazy off the charts. I love it because it's stupid as hell. It's a weird thing to be known for, but it's fun. The uh, What I find interesting about someone recognizing you in public about the monster fucker is, A, think about how many times someone has gone up to you and gone, oh, are you Stevie the monster fucker? And then realizing it's not you. <laughs> I never thought of that. <laughs> and then they're like, Am I who? And I like, oh, never mind. Um, but anyway, listen, Stevie the Monster Fucker, um, I wish you the best of luck in your uh, continuing content career. And um, I hope one day it works out between you and Bill Cipher. Thank you very much. God bless. <laughs> God bless. You have a wonderful night. You too. Call from Lila. Lila! Yes? How are you, Lila? Um, I'm kind of nervous. Why are you nervous? Because I've really been thinking about shaving my head. But I'm scared shaving of what other people would say to me. Yes. How old are you? 
I am about to be 19 in like two days. Hmm. You really want to shave your head, but you're afraid of what other people will think of you. Yeah, especially my parents. They're super judgy. Hmm. Well, you're 18 years old right now. Do you are you do you still live with your parents, or are you getting an apartment, or are you going to college? Um, I live in the same town, but not with them. You know, uh, this is actually a great opportunity because you know, as you get older, you know, uh, I almost feel like shaving your head is is a way to you know sort of, uh, you know, d d do a cannonball into the pool of no longer living uh, in accordance with your parents' judgments of you and with judgments of you by your friends and society at large, um, which is a, you know, you get, you, you take that cannonball and my God, does the water feel nice once you get in there? The thing is, I can't swim. You can't swim? No. I never How do you know you that. can't swim? You ever been in the water before? Yeah, and I almost drowned. You can't drown in this metaphorical pool. Because it's a metaphor? Yes. I don't, I, I I'm trying that? to think, like, in, in the terms of this metaphor, where jumping into the pool of not caring what other people think of you, I mean, what does it mean to drown? What, what are you going to do, die? Well, because other people think that you're weird because you shaved your head? No! You're going to huh. float, Lila. Lila, Lila, listen, right. I know you're young, but goddamn, now's a perfect opportunity for you to... Free yourself of the judgments of other people, especially your parents. Uh-huh. I think you should do it. Wow, okay. I feel, you... I feel so motivated right now. Like, I'm shaking. Good. 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 Wow. It's your life. It's your body. It's your hair. It's not your parents's. It's not anyone else's but yours, Lila. Uh-huh. And it could always grow back. It could always grow back. That's the perfect thing about hair. Right. It'll oh, my God. Back. Thank you. Of course. Are you going to do it? Yeah. yeah, I think I am going to do it. Then awesome. I think I'll, I'll reach it. On top of achieving it. Go crazy. Do what you want. Oh it's your life. You get one, then you die. And then, right. I don't know, maybe you get reincarnated as, a, as like a dog or something. But that's a maybe. That's not guaranteed. Right. Oh, a dog wouldn't be bad. That'd be good. Oh, thank you so much. Oh my God. Of course, Lila. You have a wonderful rest of the night. Uh-huh, you too. Call from Noel. Noel. Holy shit. We're doing it. Yo. Oh my god. Holy fuck. Yes. <laughs> it's yes, Noel. Noel. Hi. How are you? I'm great. How are you? You're great. Why are you so why are you great? Cuz I just got home from work and I'm glad to be fucking home. What what's work like? Bullshit. I hate it. It's bullshit. Why is it bullshit, dude? Because I work at a fucking restaurant. <laughs> Restaurants are fantastic places. You know? They got mozzarella sticks. Does your restaurant have mozzarella sticks? No. Oh, damn. I can see why I don't like working there, then. You should quit that job. <laughs> start working at a restaurant that has mozzarella sticks. That way you can get free mozzarella sticks, Naomi. Yeah, that's your name, right? Noel. Uh, that's basic. This is basically the same names. So what what what's the what's the best dish that they serve at your restaurant? Mm, probably the coleslaw. I don't even eat coleslaw. I don't either, but I've heard it's good. <laughs> what's the best thing that you've eaten at the restaurant? I don't want to eat their food. What's the? Uh, you sound like you really hate this place. What do you hate the most about it? Well. I like the place, don't get me wrong. It's one of the um, fucking my co workers I don't like. Mm, why don't you like them? Because she's this a stuck a up little spicy here. She's a stuck up <laughs> little bitch, you said. Yes. So you work at a restaurant with a co worker who, I'm going to quote you on this, is a stuck up little bitch. Yes, sir. Uh, ex explain why you explain why you believe that this person is a stuck up little bitch. Okay, all right. Let me elaborate this for you. All right. Sure, please. So, yeah, of course. I'm in the back. You know, I take care of all the dishes and shit. It's yeah. disgusting. She takes her sweet ass time. You know, all dainty, putting the little dishes back, gives me side eyed looking 
fucking looks. And I just want to, like, take the power hose and fucking spray her and be like, can you move out of the way so I can get the fucking look, dishes? Uh, look, here, look, I'm not taking sides. I'm just, you know, telling people, I'm just, you know, mentioning what I observe. Nothing wrong oh. with doing your dishes a little dainty, you know? I like to I like to look cute while I'm doing my dishes, too, you know? I like to do it a little dainty. Maybe, you know, do a little spin. Do a little dish spin when I'm doing them, uh, putting them away. Why you don't like the style in which she does the dishes? She, like, wipes her hand, like, all on her pants and, you know, like, does, like, a little, like, prissy catwalk out into the front house. And it's just, she takes too much time. I, I need to get the dishes over and get them done. You know, I'm trying to bust shit out, not take my time. You can't rush style, Noelle, dude. <laughs> she sounds like she's, like, she's trying to make, she's trying, it sounds like she's trying to make it into an art of some kind. There's a time and place for everything. And that's not the time and place. Mm. You know, you, no, I'm gonna actually be honest with you here. In all seriousness, I, I don't understand why you, uh, you're so bothered by this person. I mean, it's, are they doing anything to you specifically? No. <laughs> you know, Noel, you ever explore the concept of? Um, there's no. I don't know if there's a word for this, but the idea that you know whether or not a person upsets you, the fact that you're upset, the fact that you're upset. About this person who you described as a stuck-up little bitch. I mean, I can tell that the anger that you have is is a. I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna use a metaphor here. It's a the giant dark ball inside of your heart that, of of this person. And look, even if you hate them, I think if you were to let it go and hate them a little less, it would only be in your benefit. I mean, I would like to get the number, but. She won't talk to me. I don't know. I'm not the type of person that's gonna like go out of my way to talk to someone. I don't know. I like people talking to me first. Then I'm I'm actually a nice person. I know I probably come off as you know a bitch, but I'm actually a really sweet and caring person. No, I mean, look. First, well, first of all, well, I mean, there's a couple things. First of all, y you know, I think if you did try to get to know, how, how much, be honest, be honest with me, Noel. Be honest. Are you? Will you be honest with me if I ask you some? Yes. Yeah. How many? Full conversations have you had with this person? One. One? Yes. Describe how that went. <laughs> she dropped some dishes and I accidentally picked it up and got food on her and I said, I'm really sorry. And she was just like, it's okay. And that's how the conversation went. No, Very well, listen. Noel, dude, come on, Noel. Noel, you gotta, you gotta get to know this person, dude. You gotta get to know this person better than that, dude. You can't, you can't. I mean, you can't form such. I mean, this isn't even just like a. She seems like a little weird. Like I don't. This is you called her a stuck up little. I mean, that's strong, Noel. You know, at least, at least get you know go in there, get some intel. Go and, and, and uh, Noel, if you would please, just you know try to have a conversation with this person, and if you're gonna do that. Try to drop any preconceived notions or expectations. I feel like we've been talking, we were talking earlier about dropping expectations. But you gotta go into this reading positive intent. Like, if you are gonna go and you're gonna try to have a conversation with this girl, you're gonna try to get to know her, you can't go into it like, I'm gonna specifically be looking to get mad at her. I would actually have you go the opposite. Like, you gotta specifically look with the aim of trying to find something you actually like about her. It's something you guys may have in common, maybe. You know, because no, I mean, I this, this rage, it feels like it's only hurting you, Noel. No, I'm, I have all of my other coworkers, you know, I'm friends with them. It's just, she doesn't talk to me. I mean, I guess I could go out of my way to be like, you know, hey, she doesn't even know my name. I don't even know her name. I just know her as the blonde. Of course you don't. You've only talked once. <laughs> okay. All right. I will turn a new leaf and. I will be more positive tomorrow Good. when I go into work. Good. And by the way, I want you to know something. If even Noel, even if if you go up to let's what, what's this girl's name or a fake name? I'm gonna call her Caitlin. If you go up to Caitlin and you say, "Hey, you know, how's it go? Whatever," and she's like, "You're a piece of shit. Go fuck yourself," and is being mean to you, <laughs> you si still, you still. Should not harbor such strong hatred of her because it's only it's only hurting you. No, I mean at that point, that's a decision for me to make if words should affect me because that's all up to me. I, if I want to let it upset me, that's my choice. But I can just brush it off and not give a fuck. I think that brushing it off and not giving a fuck is an excellent strategy. 
Yeah, I got some mind up here. <laughs> Thank you so much for calling, Noelle. You have a wonderful rest of the night, and I wish you the best of luck. You too. Call from... Shallon. Shallon? Salad. Shallon? Salad? Shallon. Can you... Print, can you spell that phonetically? Hold on, I just turned off my stream. What'd you say? You said your name is Salon? Yes, with an F. <laughs> Where is that F? Salon. F-A-L-L-O-N. Oh! Fat, like yeah. Jimmy Fallon. Yeah, like Jimmy Fallon. Okay. So your question is, what happened? And yesterday, I broke up with my boyfriend. So that's mm. what happened. Why'd you break up with him? He cheated on me. He cheated on you. That's a good reason to break up with him. Yeah. How long were you guys together? Um, A little over a year. Mm. Okay. And how are you feeling about it? Um, Honestly, I'm feeling pretty good. Hell and yeah. but my only problem is though I don't know how to talk to people because I've been in a relationship so long so I'm having trouble mm. like getting out there. Mm. Well, that's good, right? Because you know, look, the longer you had stayed in that relationship, which was probably bad anyway because it ended with him cheating on you, the further your social skills would have deteriorated. So I actually feel like you know a year of a you know uh, uh, lacking the ability to talk to other people. Uh, that's getting off pretty good, you know? You could have been in deep, you know, 10 years and then got down and been like, oh, I don't know how to interact with another human being. Yeah, that makes sense. Exactly. Are you making any efforts? Are you on the uh, uh, the hinges, the bumbles, the tinders, the okay cupids, the J-dates? No, I didn't get on... I'm not going to do any, like, dating websites. I just good. have been posting thirst traps, basically. Posting thirst traps. <laughs> hmm. What what is what is the goal of these thirst traps? Just for male validation. Hmm. Why do you why do you feel as though you need male validation? I don't know because I just got cheated on, probably. Hmm. Well, I you know look, I mean, you I feel like you have a double opportunity here. You have the opportunity to both. You know, enhance your social skills and, you know, kind of similar to uh, a lot of kind of a little bit similar to what I was talking about. Uh, is your name Lila? No, your name is Fallon. A little bit similar to what I was talking about Lila about, you know, freeing herself from the chains of the, you know, needing the, the validation of other people. You know, I feel like this is an opportunity for you to, you know, maybe explore some time with yourself, you know, free yourself from the chains of, of, of needing validation from other people. Yeah, that makes sense. Hmm. Do you have uh, do you have friends? Yes, of course. You been hanging out with your friends anymore? I feel like a lot of times when people they get into long relationships, they neglect their friendships sometimes. It happens. No, me and my friends, we all stayed pretty close, and I mean, we're even closer now that we can all spend most of our time together. Because now it's summer too. Hmm. Wait a minute. How old are you? Nineteen. Oh. Um. What the hell was I going to say? Well, that's good, you know? Uh, it's good that you're spending time with your friends, you know? Um, I know that when you're young, you want validation from everyone all the time. I get it, I understand. But, you know, listen, Fallon. You don't need it, you know? I mean, look, right. if you want to post thirst traps just because, you know, it's your body, your social media, your, you can do whatever you want, go ahead. But, you know, um, you know, don't feel like you need validation from anyone to do anything. Yeah, true. Yeah. But they make me feel good, you know? I feel good that's about a good myself. Reason to do it. Good. Good. I think that's a good reason to do it. Yeah. Hmm. You should Well, maybe, what's been maybe, happening with you? Maybe like are there any skills you've always wanted to learn? Bowling? Uh Um uh, fun uh, fact actually, I bowled for 4 years in high school. Really? I I just made up bowling. Bowling was the I tried to think of a an activity and it was the first one that popped into my head. Well, it must have popped up for a reason cuz I played that for 4 years. I was pretty good too. You are? Are you still good? Um, I haven't bowled in a long time since I graduated mm. high school, but 
I think I'd still be good. I still have my ball. Maybe that's your thing, my dude. Special Maybe ball. that's your thing. Maybe that's your thing, dude. Maybe you join a bowling league. You know, this propels you to like uh, rediscover your long lost uh, love of bowling, and then you become a champion. You get the seven ten splits. You be you bowl a three hundred. I like this path for you. I mean, look, you shouldn't uh, do it just because I'm telling you to do it. But I'm just throwing ideas out here. I'm gonna do it just because you said it too. I take no responsibility for anything that happens to you. You have a good rest of the night, Layla. No, your name is not Layla. Layla was the name of the last caller. Your name is Fallon. You have a good rest of the night, Fallon. Thank you so much for calling. Thank you. Call from Parker Millison. Parker Millison? Howdy, Mr. Gecko. How old are you, Parker? How old am I or how am I? How old are you? I am 23. 23. Do you like being 23? You know, it's a LeBron and Jordan's number, so I guess so. Can't be too bad. Are you a big sports guy? Yeah, I, I'd say so. More of a, you, ever, you, know. you ever thought about inventing your own sport? Parker Ball? Uh, actually, actually, um, a friend of mine has a uh, sport he invented. I, I take part in an event in it. It's called Pat Ball. So, Pat Ball. Pat Ball, yeah. Is your friend's name Pat? His name is Pat. Mm, how do you it play Pat, Pat Ball? It's kind of like, um, what's, the, what's that, like water polo, almost, like Quidditch in the water. Oh, it's like water polo. Yeah, it, it it's kind of kind of water polo-ish, but just in an above ground pool. What uh, if you have to say, even if it's only one thing, what is the key difference between pat bowl, pat ball, and water polo? Uh, probably that his little brother gets the ball for us when it mm. goes out of the pool. Hmm. So specifically, so the so the only way to play Pat Ball is for Pat's little brother to be involved. You cannot play Pat Ball without Pat's little brother. Uh, yeah, you you can't play Pat Ball without Pat's little brother. Um, what we usually do is like when you throw the ball and you try to get it past the other person, you know, uh, it goes out. So we tell him we're like, hey, we'll time you and see how long it takes for you to go get the ball, you know? And what's uh, what's Pat's little brother's best time? We never really time him, but we give mm. him a fake time. You know what I mean? Mm. Do, you at least give him a, do you at least give him a generous fake time, a time that makes him feel accomplished? Hell no. Hell no. Mm. Every time he comes back, it's always it's too slow. It's it's been like forty five minutes. That way, the next time he tries to get faster, you know. Mm. That's very smart, actually. Yep, yep. Mm. Could, is this something you could see there being a league for? I mean, I'm sure Pat Pat would like for there to be a league because, you know, then we could then we could claim claim, you know, money or some some shit for it. I'm not really sure how get money from creating these guys, but I would love for that to happen. You just ask Pat's little brother for money. But actually, he probably doesn't have any money. How old is Pat's little brother? Like, 13? Uh, yeah, he was at the beginning. Well, wow, that's a really close guess, man. That's really, I'm pretty sure he was, like, 13 when we started with Pat Ball. Interesting. 13 is like, I feel like 13. Maybe I'm crazy. Uh, Pat, I, I, what's your name? Parker. Parker, I'd love to know your opinion on this. I think 13 is a little old to be tricked so easily. Yeah. I was imagining him like 11 or something. Actually, no, no, uh, tricking a 13 year old shouldn't be that hard. No, no, it's not really that hard. No. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. But now, now he's like 16, you know, so. He's 16. Can you, is he as trickable as he, as he was then? Is he still gullible? Absolutely, absolutely not, but we've moved on to the younger sibling, so. Mm. 
there was a younger one and now we get her to do it most of the time but she's not as reliable as he was mm. Pat Ball just hasn't been the same since Pat little brother Pat's little brother grew up and stopped yeah. um, and you know gained a sense of awareness and time absolutely not absolutely ever not. since Pat's little brother learned how long a minute was exactly Pat yeah. Ball has been a terrible experience. Pat Ball has went downhill drastically since the loss of Pat Ball Retriever Par- or Carter. Well, what the hell are you going to do now, Parker? I don't know, man. I don't know. I uh, We're trying to figure out a system, maybe a dog or like a some futuristic arm that'll like stretch out of the pool and grab it for us. I ain't really, I ain't really too sure. Try the dog. Try the dog. See, see, let me know how the dog goes. I like the idea of the dog. I mean, I definitely, I definitely will. You know, it's, it's more of his sport, so I, I expect him to come up with the, uh, come, you know, bring the dog and the, the retrieving dog to hey. the table. Yeah. You all right, Parker? You doing okay? <sighs> I'd say I'd say I'm all right. I I ain't doing too bad. That's good. Thank How are you so you much doing? for calling, Parker. Oh yeah, thank you. Thank you for thank you for letting me get through, man. It's of been course. A, it's been a great time. It's been an honor. Yeah. You have a good night. You too, man. Thank you. Call from Lenot Me. Lenot Me, is that you? Oh yeah. Me. What's up? What's up, Lenami? Lenami, can you turn your mute your stream? Yeah, I can do that. What's up? What's up? Thank you for giving me like twenty dollars. Oh, is that how it like equates? I don't know how this works. Oh, do you do you want it back? No, I don't. Okay, thank you. Of course. Yeah, I wanted to be on your gecko dating show and it just never worked out, I guess. Did you did you apply? Yeah, I did. We even talked about it in your DMs before the night, before it happened. Did we? Yeah, what, we did. What's your name? What's what was your name? Lenot me. Lenot me. Taylor Samuel. What's up? <laughs> Taylor Samuel. We talked yeah. about it in my DMs. What did you say? Oh, I think I had responded to a background choice. You were trying to choose what to stream to. And then and you said I, you said Gek date or something? I don't remember what my what my idea was. I've deactivated and reactivated my Instagram so many times. I'm not even sure our messages are still there. I'm trying to think if there cuz I look I look at all the I look at all the people. Oh not yeah, no, you me. responded. We talked. You said something kind. What did I say? I don't know. It was kind though. My impression's good or I wouldn't have given you any money tonight. The rock and roll. I I appreciate that. All right, we'll get you on the next one. Apply to the next one. All right, I'll try. When is the next one? Uh, 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 uh probably the, either the last week of May or the second to last week of May. One of those two. Yeah, it just de- depends on work. I'm working like a dog now that entertainment is back. We'll figure it out. By the way, we had another person. We had another person earlier. Say that um, she was sick as a dog. Sick as a dog. To dog. So another person said sick as a dog, which I didn't like because it generalizes all dogs as sick, which is not true. You said work like a dog. I don't like that either. I have a dog. Well, some dogs there's working extremely dogs. Extremely lazy, though, lays though, around all day, it. doesn't do anything, doesn't pay rent, has yeah. no job. I hope That's you're not true. working like that dog. I hope you're working like a hu- like a human. I mean, being. I guess it's just a- I'm trying to. I'm I'm trying to adjust back to not COVID life. You know, I w- I was what? working like a dog. I guess if we're what de- is, you know generalizing dogs is lazy. Right? What is not working? Uh, okay, I guess that makes sense. What is what is your COVID not COVID life look like? My not COVID life. Uh, I work in entertainment. I'm a live audio technician, so um, it's pretty. You know, I I kind of make my living on events, man. It's been really rough audio without technician. it. Audio technician. Yeah. What do you audio tech? 
um, like live mixing. So like bands and stuff, I mic up all the instruments on stage and kind of balance the sound out so that everyone gets to enjoy shows. That's cool. Do you run your own business doing that? Do you work for a company? I work for a company. I'm, uh, I work at a casino on the East Coast. Oh, I feel ugh, I feel like um, cute. we've gotten a lot of casino callers. Yeah, I heard that dude with the security poop. That was pretty dope. That was surveillance, huh? Uh, yeah, how do you know? He, he Maybe he, who knows? Maybe he works at your casino. Maybe you got two, maybe you got a secret geck guy thing going on. He, see, there we go. There's good. This is like B-sides of geck day, man. If I could get him now, if, okay. If I could get the casino guy to apply for Gek Dead, and you apply for Gek Dead, I'll, I'll hook you guys up. That's that's what I'm talking about. Mm. I like how this is good thinking. This is good thing. I need to think outside the box because I'm going through kind of like this weird, traumatic, unexplainable heartbreak experience, and that's kind of why I wanted to like talk. I was like, my therapist isn't really helping, so maybe the Gek go well. <laughs> why is it your therapist helping? What's I don't the know, matter? It's just What's the matter? Um, well, so there's this guy that I've really liked for quite some time and only because I found his Spotify and started like creeping his playlist and was like, I don't know, I guess I fell in love with his taste in music. You know, it's like a millennial tragedy because it's one sided, right? Yeah, so I bought so him a hundred dollar you... bouquet of flowers on Valentine's Day and sent it to him like anonymously. And he immediately texted me. He must have obviously known I'm the only mush that would do something like that. And he still hasn't asked me out, still hasn't, like, tried to hang. It's just, like, it's kind of just left as is. Well, I mean, you can't... <laughs> <laughs> it sucks. You can't. <laughs> you, uh, oh, look, if you're going to give something like that, I mean, you can't do it conditionally is the problem. I know, exactly. And I've, had, I've let that go. I've let it go, you know. It's just I feel like he doesn't understand why I would do something like that. Okay, so is this like a musician that you've liked his his music, or is just a regular guy, not just a musician, regular but you dude? Like his playlist, just a regular dude. I just like his playlist. Wait a minute, how did you? Wait, here's hold on. But actually, we skipped a step that I actually is very important. How did you get, find his address to send him flowers? Um, so we, this is a small town, and I've, he's actually sent me his address before. We've hung out like once. Right, so not, he's not a, uh, so he's not, not a, a mystery. Stranger. He's not a mystery guy. You know. No, he exists. He exists in my life. I sent it to his job though, so he owns this like ice cream parlor near me, and or, like, right, I'm getting it. the timeline. I'm getting the timeline all totally confused because you're telling me that you have no idea who this guy was. It was one sided. He didn't know who you were. You found no, him. You found his Spotify in playlist. He... Listen, it was one sided in the way that like he only. Um, you know, he, I'm interested in him because of his music taste, but I don't know if he has anything to be interested in me for. I just think okay, that... you guys know each other. Yeah. And you sent him a hundred dollar bouquet of flowers. Yeah. First of all, men don't really care about flowers that much. I don't think. Okay. Right. I might be wrong. I mean, it's a gesture. I would be flattered if I had a. Um, no, I, look, it was a very sweet gesture. Does that get acknowledged by men? If someone sent me a $100 bouquet of flowers, I'm not going to lie, those flowers would be dead in two days. Like, probably less than that, because I don't... I'm not good yeah. at taking care of living things. Like, I can barely take care of myself. I eat wheat thins for breakfast, lunch, and dinner today. <laughs> I would send a... Th but yeah, I would send a thank you. Okay. But you wouldn't necessarily want to, like, see that person? To like hear, to, I don't know. Hear them out. No, I don't think I don't think it would in, be inherent. I don't think it would inherently register. Uh, 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 would I want to see them? Yeah. Like, would I want to know who they are? Would I want to like go on a date with them if they sent me a yeah. one hundred dollars bouquet of flowers? Um, on a personal level, I don't know. I think that's a lot up front. Oh. You had his number, don't you? Yeah, and uh, you know I get responses from time to time and stuff. And we okay, used to so you've we been started out working together. I uh, kind of I get his attention once in a while. I'm so com I'm I'm highly confused about your relationship with this guy because at one He's point I thought awful. you two didn't know each other, but you know his stuff. But you know, you said you've hang you said you've hung out once. 
Yeah, we used to work together, and we hung out one time, and it was just like, you know, he's always been so complimenting to me through messages and, like, kind, and so I've seen him, like, we've taken small, like, strolls together, like, brief strolls, because we live in the same area, right? Okay. So I just, like, ha I got, I developed a little crush, because I okay. looked him up on Spotify, and essentially just, like, kind of gush my heart out and now i'm just existing did you look him up on spotify before or after you like hung out with him in person after okay i think i think i'm starting to make sense of this situation i think you here's what i think you should do why don't you just ask him if he wants to hang out with you i've tried and i even and then it's just like He's always busy. There's always a reason. So I stopped trying. And instead, I wrote that's, a song for him. I wrote a song and sent it to him. And he, like... Listen, he not me, I'm gonna, listen, not me. I'm going to be honest with you. I think if if, if you're... And I, and I would say this just to anyone, regardless of any dynamic or anything at all. If you are interested in someone and you're kind of getting the idea that they're not interested in you back, you just move on to someone else. Okay. 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 It hurts. You know, this it's is kind of... There's this concept that's called fuck yes or no. Like, I really do believe that you can kind of tell when people are into you or not. And if they're not, then you just move on. You know, there's 8 trillion people on planet Earth, probably. And, yeah. uh, you know, there's other, there's still there'll be, there'll be other people, you know? And you don't have to go, you don't have to, you know, um, open up with grand gestures or anything. You can just ask people if they want to hang out with you. And if they don't, you move on. There's other people that maybe you'll be even more compatible with. That's true. So don't tell him he was my muse for a song and then send it to him and hope that he responds to it. <laughs> it's probably not. Solution. Yeah, I think I think you'd be better off finding finding someone who you think would be more receptive to that. Oh, see, but I, maybe it's the resistance I enjoy. I know I'm not the only one. Well, you know, maybe that's something. <laughs> maybe maybe that's something you can talk to your therapist about. I thought that's what you were for. No, I'm just a gecko. Okay. All right. Well, I tried. You know, I tried to rebound. I tried to do the gecko date thing, and now what? We'll you get know? you on I... the next one, dude. We'll get you on the next one, Taylor. Right. Thank you so much for calling in, man. You have a wonderful rest of the night. Bye, my dear. Thanks. Call from Baba Fett. Baba Fett. Gecko? What's up? How are you now? Uh, how am I now? Yeah. In comparison to when? I don't know. Other times. Have we spoken before, Boba Fett? Uh, no. No, not that I know of. I don't know. That's a weird answer to that question. I mean, you didn't know. Are you okay? Hmm. Uh, you know, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, okay. I'm okay. I'm not great. I'm not bad. You, 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 you don't sound okay. You sound like you sound like you're like trying to kill a fly in your apartment right now. Well, I'd say I'm trying to kill a fly in life. You're not trying in to the kill apartment. A fly I'm not really in, in life. An yeah, you know, there's there's always a fly around. There are, there's always something that's getting in the way. Sure, it's always bugging bugging you, you know. And I'm just trying yeah. to get those flies out of here and get Tell my life these, a little bit more. Steady. Tell me about these flies that you're swatting currently. Oh well, um, you know, I guess I'm trying to just stabilize. It's been, uh, things have been tossing and turning. And, uh, right now mm. I'm trying to, you know, trying to get into a, a steady situation, trying to, trying to buy a house at some point, trying to Tell be, Tell me about the know, last thing that tossed. The last thing that tossed. Um, I guess I, I recently went through a breakup. It was not a bad breakup. A it was a very amicable breakup. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I don't forget the theme. But yeah, it was a pretty like you know amicable one. It was just kind of like one of those, hey, I think it's time to time to be done. And uh, so you know, I just moved into a new place. She just moved out of the state, 
And, uh, yeah, I don't know. So I'm, like, sitting by myself in a little cabin in the woods. And, um, you know, it's not so bad. It's really not so bad. You're at a cabin in the woods right now? Yeah. Yep. What, where in the woods? How do you, is it, I guess it's not far enough removed that you don't have internet connection. Mm, yeah, it's not, it's not great internet connection, but it works. <laughs> is it in the middle of nowhere? Is it an isolated cabin? No, like I'm on a road, you know, I'm in a, a we're, I'm in a small town. I think there's maybe like a thousand people in this town. Um, you know, you it's not, I'm not like, no, no, I, I moved here. This is where I live. I mean, I wish, uh, I wish it was a vacation. You but, wish it was a vacation. Uh, what do you mean by that? You wish yeah. you lived was a vacation? Well, no, I wish, I wish life felt a bit more like a vacation. <laughs> Do you uh, uh, I have I've been working. I've been actually been an Instacart shopper lately. Mm. That's been uh, my thing since I moved moved back to to my home state a few months ago. Has that been? And, uh, so it's a, what's that? Has that been lucrative? You know, it actually it has. Um, so uh, so when I first I first moved back to, to my home state and I lived in this other town. Um, where, where I lived with my girlfriend, and in that area, it was really good. I was making like thirty-five bucks an hour. Um, but now I live yeah. out in a little cabin in the woods, and there's not really as many people that need their groceries delivered out, out this way. So, mm, right, it makes yeah. sense that you would get a little bit less work uh, where there's a lot less people if you're living in a town of a thousand. Yes, exactly. So I'm, um, you know, trying to find d- different things to make the money. I've been I've been foraging and trying to sell my wares. Um, You've been foraging. What's the last thing you forged? Uh, not forged, foraged. Like I pick things out of the ground. I don't know if that's what you heard or said, but um, I, I foraged. Uh, ramps. I think the word I said was pretty similar to what the word that is the real word. Uh, <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah, no, I, I forged some ramps. Uh, so they're like wild leeks. That's what I, that's what I've been picking today, mm. um, and, uh, and some fiddleheads, you know, and mm. uh, yeah, I'm trying to sell those to restaurants and people, and you know, just make an extra buck here and there. So why would you why why not just cut out the middleman here? I mean, what do you what do you you know need money for to purchase various wares and food and stuff? Why don't you just you know, yeah. you're so close to just getting rid of the middleman of the economy and just foraging your own wares and growing your own food? It's, that's what I want cabin. to do. I I don't know if my my current landlords will accept you know ramps and fiddleheads in exchange for rent at the moment. Um, though I haven't asked, so maybe you I should your own talk cabin, to them about though. it. If you could forge, I, I you could want... build a cabin out of fiddles. A fi- the Ooh. fiddle cabin. You know, that's not a bad idea. It's not. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'll, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll give that some, some good thought. We'll, we'll see. I, I do want to build my own cabin. That's that's kind of the, the end goal here. You know, maybe I'll use a couple of sticks and twigs as well. I think you're on the right path. Yeah. Well, thanks, you know. You really, you really helped me figure my stuff out. I'm glad to hear that. So I, I got, I got one question for you though. Um, sure. What, what happened? What did you say your name was? Uh, Baba. You have a great rest of the night, Baba. Thank you very much. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I have one, one question for you. W- what happened? Call from Jason Todd. I'm Scuba Stevens at the good name as well. Call from Jason Todd. I'm Scuba Stevens at the good name as well. Call from. Ah. Oh my God. Is this Luke? This is not Luke. No. That's what I thought. I thought it wasn't Luke. It's Jason Todd. I was asking if it was Luke because I wanted you to say no because I didn't think it was Luke. And so if you said Luke, I would be like, all right, my suspicions are correct. This is not Luke. This is Jason. This is Jason. Yeah, you, you were right the whole time, man. I mean, I'm not going to question your uh, your Jedi powers. 
I don't have Jedi powers. I have Gecko powers, which and they're wet. That's way look worse. Jedi's they have mind control. They uh, have the big laser swords, but you know what geckos can do? Do what? Nothing. That's why they're not very popular to keep as pets. They're very boring. They just want to they, yeah. they slither around. They don't do a lot. That's true. What oh, kind of powers do you have? What kind of what? Powers do you have? My powers. Yeah, tell me about oh. the Jason powers. Uh, I can I can die over and over again, but I will always come back. <clears throat> really? Really? I'm basically immortal. I die horrible. on the inside, and then I keep coming back. Mm. When was the last time you died on the inside? Uh, this year. Uh, uh, my girl left. We split. I had to move into a single apartment. Uh, mm. I had to like a work like a really horrible job, and I got diagnosed with BPD, and just a lot of bad stuff seems, seems to have happened recently past couple of months mm. Mm. and right. you're 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 trudging along anyway I'm, I'm i'm going anyway i was pretty down so like you know i'm, I'm back up i'm glad to hear you back up going forward um i have some advice or i i need some advice from you i will do the best i can i, I don't know if you've been watching the stream i've given some advice about things that i don't know what i'm talking about and, you know, I'm not opposed to doing that, but uh, I am opposed to doing that uh, without exclaiming, without, uh, 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 what is it? It's not exclaim. Is it exclaim? Dis oh, that's disclaiming that first. Yeah, no, I, I know you're not a real therapist and you're just, you know, the gecko that lives underwater right now. Uh, I live underwater, I'm just visiting. I'm sorry, what, 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 let's start over. Uh, uh, yeah, what's up, man? What do you, what do you want to talk about? Okay. So me and my ex were like friends for a while, like friends with benefits. You know what I mean? Sure. And uh, that after was just, after we, yeah, after we broke up and she was still like, we moved into two separate apartments um, that are at the same apartment complex as the one, like the two bedroom we used to have. Sure. So she was having sex. Yeah. So, and she lives like across the parking lot. Yeah. And we were still having sex and it was, you know, it was really awesome sex. I don't know what kind of sex geckos have. I got to imagine that's pretty good too, but like, this is really good human sex. Sure. And, uh, anyway, and now when I met her, she was bi and she was bi for like a long time. Sure. And then she would tell me towards the end of the relationship, she's like, I think you're going to be the last dude I'm going to like date. Mm. And I'd be like, okay. And then she would jump me and then she would run over to my new apartment and like jump me again and again. And, uh, and then like the last time we started to, something started to happen, she got very uncomfortable and like, we obviously, you know, stopped. And, uh, anyway, she made it clear, like from that point, you know, that we're not going to be doing that anymore. And like, sure. I said, That's fine. I still want to be, you know, your friend and all that. And I don't, I don't see why we still can't hang out and like binge shit and stuff. And uh, I can assure the chat that this is a real story. I, if I was making up a story, it'd be much cooler. Um, anyway. Don't look at the chat. There's okay. no chat going on. The only chat going on is between you and me, my friend. Okay. Um, anyway. And uh, so we start kind of dating around, seeing other people, you know, sure. going through the, the moving on phase or whatever. <clears throat> and uh, she... We're talking about these people we're talking to and she showed me a picture of this person and this person was like really shitty to me at the uh that horrible place i worked at for like a couple months oh so she started seeing all right so you guys it sounds like are remaining friends if you're showing each other who you're dating now and so she started dating someone that you knew already uh yes yeah and this person was like like treated me like shit and sure. uh was that was was one of the employees i had at this very toxic uh, like fast food place, like local sure. fast food place I was working at for a while to like make ends meet. Okay. And uh, anyway, and I told her, I was like, oh, that person's horrible. They, you know, I told all the, the messed up stuff this person did and how they 
would make fun of the mentally challenged person that worked there and how they would like call me names and like treat me like shit. And that they slept with uh, one of the cooks that used to work there. Like they slept with his, uh, his, his wife. She slept with his wife. I told her all this horrible stuff. And then she was like, Oh, well, I would never like, I would never be with somebody like that. I wouldn't do that to you. And then she'd be like, Oh, I'm just talking to them. I'm never actually going to meet them. I'm just toying with them. And then That's it came out the other. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty weird. And, uh, and then like, we went to like, uh, like Ikea a while back and I noticed like, she's still like, texting this person. I was like, what are you doing? Are you, are you still rolling with that plan or whatever? Like, okay. oh, well. here, here, here's, here's, uh, I, I, is the advice sort of like, you know, what, what should you do about your friend wanting to see this person that is shitty? Because to me, it's like, you know, you did your part, right? Like you warned this person's your friend. You care about them. They're, they're your friend. Uh, you know, you, you well, did your part to warn them about this person that they're seeing that's shitty. But after that, I mean, y- 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 there's nothing you can do. You know, they're going to see whatever they're going to see you know. And, she, and anyway, we get to the point of, like, her, like, gaslighting me and somehow making me feel bad about this shit. And she just eventually co- cops to her true feelings, which are, and I quote, I don't care about your feelings. I'm just going to go ahead and do this anyway. And I was like, oh. Okay. Okay, whatever. And then she comes to my place the other day to borrow something or whatever, and she's like, "Oh, we're not going to be friends now. So we haven't talked in a while." And I was like, "No, you fucked that up. Like, we're we're not going to. There's no way for us to be friends anymore." Okay. To me, that's a betrayal. So, like, I guess what I'm asking is, can I be friends with this person or not? No, you shouldn't be. Uh, well, it's not about can you. It's about you know, look, what, what's what's the best for your own life? And it sounds like uh, this person straight up told you that she doesn't care about your feelings. Uh, so if she doesn't care about your feelings, then, you know, why should you be friends with her? Granted, I don't think it's any of your business, uh, you know, who she is seeing. You know, if she's seeing someone that's horrible no. and because you care about her, you don't want her to see a horrible person. You warn her that the person is horrible. I think that was, you know, good on you as a friend. But, you know, you've given her that information. She can do whatever she wants with that information. Um, but, yeah, I don't. I mean, it... it, it doesn't seem to me, especially if you're like, you know, coming here and, and complaining about it and wondering even why, you know, even if you should be in this friendship, then I don't know, that kind of sickles to me that you shouldn't because it's it's uh, uh, sort of a place of stress for you. So, yeah, no, I, I would definitely support you getting out of this friendship where a person tells you straight up that they don't care about your feelings. Okay, yeah. No, you're right. It's been a couple of weeks, and, like, she sent me, like, TikToks and shit and, like, Snapchats, like, here and there, and I've been kind of ignoring them. But Yeah, I mean, yeah. if you're not feeling it, then, you know, you gotta listen. Uh, it, it sounds like if this person's trying to contact you, and you've been ignoring it, it sounds like you're not, it sounds like you're not feeling it. it sounds like you don't really want to be friends with this person. I, I mean, it's just, it, it's been a lot. It seems like, I don't know, it just seems like she would play head games with me, and uh, I, I don't know, I'm just tired of it. Yeah, no, I, I don't think you should be in any sort of relationship, platonic or not, with anyone who's playing any kind of head games with you. You know, you you you, you, sh- you shouldn't make time for that. So I'm on the right path. You can play more level-headed games with. Exactly. Yeah, I think you're on the right path. All right, cool, cool. Absolutely. All right, man. That, that's all I needed to hear. I just needed to hear it from for my sure. spirit guide, which is you. For sure. For sure. For sure. Look, I wish you the best of luck, man. All right, thank you. Uh, love you, you and love stay you, green. Call from Tiff. Tiff. Oh, hey. Hello, Tiff. How are you? Doing all right. Have we spoken before, Tiff? We have not, but I actually drew a picture of you last week. You drew a picture of me last week? I did. You were sitting in the grocery cart. Uh, hmm. wait, was it the, oh, it's the, is it the little cartoon, the one that looks like Calvin and Hobbesy? Yeah. I that posted you? it on the Discord. Yeah, that was me. Oh, How are you I doing? I love that. I think that looks awesome. I'm, I'm trying to, I'm going to post it on my next little fan art Instagram thing. I think that was sick. Thank you so much for drawing that. Awesome. You're very welcome. Are you an artist by trade? Uh, no, just by hobby. Uh, because I feel like if you do art for money, it's a really easy way to kill your passion. Oh, for sure. But, I mean, so. uh, you know, well, I, I don't know. I, that's an interesting thing. I've heard people say that all the time. You know, I'm always talking all this kind of shit about, you know, hey, if you hate your job, you can just monetize whatever you like to do by going on TikTok. And then, you know, other people are like, 
you know, uh, well, no, because then if you do it for a living, you'll start to hate it. And I'm like, I, I don't know, my retort to that is like, well, you already do something that you for a living that you don't like, so, you know, I don't know. Yeah, I guess. This is my way to blow off steam, though. If I got caught up in the rat race trying to create art for money all the time, I think sure. I would just start to despise it. So. Yeah, that makes sense. I kind of keep I that guess... little slice of nirvana for me. Yeah. I mean, I, I like the idea, though, of being able to do something for a living that is yours as opposed oh, for to, sure. you know, something that is owns someone else owns. For sure. For sure. I think we are here for a very short amount of time and we should be the masters of our own destiny. So, you know, do what you want to do. Do, do what feels good. you are the master of your own destiny? Um, sometimes. It depends on the day, dude. Were you a master of your own destiny today? Uh, I hope so. Yeah, 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 I think I was. I tackled Monday with a pretty positive attitude. Nice. I made it through the day. In, in what ways do you try being... In, in what ways do you put effort towards being the master of your own destiny? Um, I try to keep a positive attitude about the people that I encounter. Um, I work in I like customer that. service, so I talk to a lot of people all day, every day. Mm. And, um, you know, I feel like with the way 2020 went, a lot of people are losing their minds right now. A lot of people are very short patient. Um, mm. And how I approach them, you know, <laughs> kind of, I, I choose how I react to those kind of people, I guess. Yes, so I, I love it. I just try to a- blow it off. It's a great example of, of being the master of your own destiny. You are cho- yeah. you're not letting other people decide how you feel. You're no, deciding. No. I enjoy. I don't like being upset and angry all the time. <laughs> I exactly. like being positive, and I'm not going to let other people decide to make me feel in, in a way in which I do not feel. I like that's a perfect example of being a master of your own domain. Exactly. Exactly. Hmm. Uh, what, where, what kind of customers, so what kind of customers do you serve is, um, so I run an office for a lawn care company. Um, and right now everybody is kind of just wanting to control their lawns <laughs> and just trying to make things look nice. And, uh, you know, it's been a struggle for us because, uh, we're, we're having trouble finding people, uh, to go out and do things. Um, we're having trouble hiring. So we're a little behind and people are quite upset about that. But I just try to stay positive, stay nice, um, you know, try to assure them that I'm going to do what I can to help them. And, uh, yeah, some people are really understanding. Some people are not. Go have ahead. you encountered any that actually that's interesting. That, that brings me to the question I was going to ask you. Have you encountered any situations perhaps recently in which staying positive was very difficult? Yes, actually. Um, we had a new customer call us and she was really rattling my employees um you know she's calling with really crazy demands um very abusive language so i had the chance to talk to her um the other day and uh she was very demanding um she used some scary language that i'm not going to repeat here because we don't need to put that out there um she was just generally not a pleasant person so i looked her up after i got off the phone with her i'm like man because she kept referring to herself as doctor um, some people like to do that because, you know, they went to medical school or or they got their doctorate. So they want to use doctor. They want to be referred to as doctor. So I looked her up and she's actually a domestic abuse. Um, she has her doctorate in domestic abuse. <laughs> so oh, no. it was just really wild to me that she would behave this right, way to right. a person that she doesn't even know. And that's her profession, I guess. Right, I don't know. It right. really it really rocked me. So, yeah, that that's something I'm going to think about for a little bit. Interesting. Maybe it, m- dude. Maybe it's just that, like, you know, she's dealing with the heaviest stuff all day. She might. Yeah. She she takes. Maybe it's something where, like, she just she takes in all this this tough stuff, and I just I don't know. She comes upon you, and it's like I got you, you, you take all this. You know, I, I got. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And that that I think that is part of customer service. And I know there's a, probably a lot of people. Um, that can relate to this is that, you know, you can never take it personally. Um, Everybody's fighting their own battles. And if they want to be an asshole to you on the phone, then they're going to be an asshole to you on the phone or in person, which is even worse. I feel like people are more brave when they can't see your face. 
Yeah. Um, but yeah, she she may have some demons that she's dealing with. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see if she calls us back and has any more colorful commentary for me or my staff. But you know, we're gonna try to make her happy. That's what we do. Mm. Um. Hmm. Shit. What was I gonna say? Uh, have you, you ever know, worked yeah, in customer it's... service? I haven't, but I I take a lot of phone calls. Okay. Well. Um, <laughs> Fair you know, what was, what was I going to say? Oh yeah, the the whole don't take a personally thing. I agree. I agree with that. I was talking to someone like months ago who worked at a call center and he got abused all the time, just people cussing him out on the phone. And it's like, you know, at the very least, it's like at least they're not they're not upset at you. They're not. No one's angry no. at you specifically. No, you they're, know, they're, they're just upset they're about something always, else. And they're taking it out on you. Exactly. Exactly. A hundred percent. Mm. Now tell me, all this negative energy that you take in, do you do you let it out anywhere? Not you know, I mean, I, you you seem like a good person. You seem like you maybe let it out in uh, uh, less destructive ways. But do you do you have a way of blowing off steam? Is that maybe where the art comes um, in? I go outside. I like that. And I touch grass sometimes. Uh, <laughs> grass is good. No, I mean, it just I, I have a I have a support group. I have friends who I love deeply and dearly. Um, we play video games together. I know it's been really hard because I haven't been able to go out and see anybody. Um, but we play a lot of video games. I have my art. Um, I get to watch, you know, streams on Twitch. I just, you need to give yourself that time at the end of the day to unwind. Because if you just sit there and stew on it constantly, that just raises your stress levels through the roof. It's not good for you. Absolutely. Well, what did you say your name was? My name's Tiff. -F -F. Thank you so much for thank you so much for sharing, Tiff. Tiff, did you have, did you post your Instagram in the in the Discord? Because I, I want to tag I you did. when I repost that when I repost that thing. I that did. Photo. Yeah, I did. I responded to you. So okay, yeah, you've got that roll. info. Awesome. Thank you so much, Tiff. You have a wonderful rest of the night. Thank you. You too. Have a good one. Tiff. Call from Tony Stark to accept. Tony Stark, baby, how you doing? I'm doing good. What's up? All right, so I got a story. I got you know, just a simple question. Well, hold you know? on, wait, Tony Stark. Listen, look, look, Tony Stark. I, we, we, I don't even, I don't know anything about you. We haven't even exchanged any amount of pleasantries before. You're gonna launch right into a story? We could, All we could. Right, I think, I, 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 I think we could, you know, spend a little bit of time in, interacting with each other. All right, what's first. up? What's up? Uh, I live in New York. Uh, yeah, on my birthday was a couple of weeks ago. Uh, How old did you turn? 24. How much money do you currently have in your name? Jesus Christ. <laughs> what, kind of, what kind of question is that, man? This is a question. How much money is in your bank account right now? How much money is in my bank account? Not, Who do you bank with? Like, Who do I bank with? Uh, a city bank. Do you do you like what would you how would you rate them out out of five? Trash. Why? <laughs> because they don't know what they're doing. Not, I'm gonna get, you know, I'm gonna get to the story. So you can try get yeah, why? Why do you want Tony? Why do you want to, What's so what? Uh, you don't even want to get. I mean, I mean, I feel like we haven't established any amount of relationship with each other. Because I need the advice. I need to know if I'm crazy or if it's or if it's just like or if if if. if. You know the situation is crazy. You know what I'm all right, tell me. All right, tell tell me. Tell me what's going on, Tony. All right, so like I said, a couple of weeks ago was my birthday, right? Four twenty is sure. my birthday. All right, you know, you know, I'm all right. Sure. You know, I'm I'm at my friend's house. You know, this girl invites me over at like ten o'clock at night to come smoke or whatever. You know, it's four twenty. She's like, all right, come smoke at your birthday, whatever. I'm like, all right, whatever. Ten o'clock. You yes. know, whatever. I'll just go over there, whatever. So I go over there, whatever. We smoke or whatever. We chill, whatever. We like it's like a it's like an apartment complex type thing, you know. They have like a little rec room, you know. We're chilling out in like the outside portion, smoking whatever. We go into the inside portion, you know. We're chilling like the little rec room, you know. It, you know, it's like ten o'clock at night, you know. He invites me over, you know. I'm like, what's up? And then um, I'm like, yo, so let's go watch like a show or something, you know what I'm saying? And she's like, she's like, nah, like my roommates don't allow guys in. And I'm like, all right, okay, whatever, you know? All right, I got the dub. It's whatever, it's whatever, it's whatever. I'll take the L. And then I'm like, all right, whatever. So I'm going to head home. It's late. I got school tomorrow. She's like, all right, we should, like, hang out some other time, you know, plan something. I'm like, all right. So I get to the bottom floor of her apartment. I check my phone, and my phone's on, like, 10% battery. I check sure. the train times. 
the next train is at 11.09. It's 11 o'clock. I'm not making that train. Okay. The next the next thing is the next train is at 12.19. I have okay. 10% battery. The ticket's on my phone. So, you know, I'm not going to make it. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to make it. Okay. So I'm still in her apartment building, and I call her, and I'm like, hey, can I use your charger? Like, my phone's on 10%. I explain the whole situation. I'm like, my phone's on 10%. Can I sure. just charge it for like 10 minutes? Okay. She's like, yeah, yeah, come on up. Come on up. You can use my charger. Okay. It's okay. So I go back up to the top floor. I yeah. wait there for like 10 minutes. Nothing. I'm like, all right, maybe she's like, I don't know, maybe she's finessing the roommates and she's going to let me in or whatever. You know, maybe it's a good day, whatever. And then 20 minutes go by, still nothing. I give her a phone call, no answer. I'm like, all right, okay, that's a little odd. 30 minutes go by, still nothing. Still okay. nothing. Okay. 50 minutes go by, I'm like, all right, I should probably just figure this shit out and dip. And okay. from that point, and from that point, I've never heard from that girl ever in my entire life ever again. But she maybe she, she was scared me, of you. She told me she wanted to see me again. I never, I never asked her to hang out again. I never. She incited me. She was like, "All right, you know, let's let's go do something sometime." I was like, "All right, shit, all right." Why not just tell me not to use the charger? Then she could listen, have just been listen, like, man, oh, look." Well, look, huh? you, you got to move. You got to move on, man. Look, you said it yourself. Look, you, 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 you know. No, 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 no. That's Sometimes completely fine. That's completely fine, though. But you're just wondering. Oh, what are you wondering? What What are you? So what you are you confused about? Human Why she? What if, I, what if I was stranded out in the middle of nowhere with a dead phone? Isn't that just human decency to let someone charge their phone for five minutes? You know, look, I, 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 I think this isn't even worth. It's, I think it's so in the past, man. I think it's not even worth <laughs> fretting about. Because it seems like... Here's here's your problem, really, is that... I mean, this seems like it's very actively bothering you. How long ago did this happen? Oh, well, my birthday was on 420, so three weeks ago, two weeks ago. Oh, listen, my guy. You got to live in the past. You're living in the past over here. <laughs> two weeks ago. That's like... Two weeks is, a, is the new two years. Look, I, she's living I, her life... <laughs> Uh, why didn't she want you to charge your phone? I don't know. Maybe she thought you were crazy or something. Okay, so that's so that's it. So that's it. At least that's the part I didn't understand. It's a craziness. Do you, factor, so. do you feel like you have? Can I ask you a question? Do you feel like you have a very? Do you? Have, how would you rate your self awareness in terms of how you come off to other people? Do you think you have a good idea of how you come off to other people when you're talk when you're talking to them? Oh yeah, 100%. With them. Like I, I feel like if I was coming off crazy in a situation, I know, and I'm like, all right, okay, okay. So in that, in fun. when you were hanging out with her, did you feel? Did you were like, all no, right, I'm coming off no, a little no, no. crazy? The whole, the whole vibe, I did not get it one time, and and even like, even if I did, she stopped it by inviting me to go hang out another time. You know what I'm saying? I understand that. Hmm. And you've never spoken so with her I'm again. Wondering. I'm just wondering the human decency part. Like, if if I hated a person, like, if I went on a date with a person and I hated them, and they were like, yo, my phone's on 5%, and I just charge it for 10 minutes, I wouldn't be, like, vanish off the face of the earth, you know what I mean? I would give them well, the listen. charger and never talk to them again. Well, you know what I would say to you then? What's your name again? Uh, Tony Stark, I believe. Tony Stark, listen, I would say to you then... If you believe that you know what she did was was uh, you know a, a sign of, of of indecency, then I would say that you uh, are very lucky that sh she did not contact you again. You did not contact her again because it doesn't seem like you would be a good match with each other. Seems like you That's have different point. values. That's so I would point. say you got off easy. I would say you should leave it in the past. You should move move forward toward you know other romantic endeavors. That's a fair point. All right. Okay. Okay. Do, 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 do you have any suggested alternatives to Citibank? Or are you going to stick um, with them? I, you know, I prefer to go to a smaller bank just because I feel like they're more, uh, they're more, um, what's the word I'm looking for? You're supporting small business? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, not even supporting small businesses, but they're more, um, they're, you're not going to get a robot. You're not going to get some person that doesn't care. You know what I mean? You're going to get a person that's actually talking to you, man. You know I mean? You Thank you so much for calling in, Tony Stark. You have a wonderful rest of the night. <laughs> All right, good night. Call from Sabrina. Sabrina. Oh my gosh, wait, am I on? Yes. 
<gasps> what? Oh my goodness! I I literally just had to refresh the page like right now because actually um, now that I, now that you mentioned it, I'm not sure if you're on because I'm not sure what you mean by it when you say are you on? Are, are you on? Are, are, when you say are you on? On what exactly? On what on? On, on on therapy gecko. You are on uh, therapy with, gecko. Yes. On, a, on, on a call with Lyle. On a call with the, Lyle on therapy gecko. Oh my god! <laughs> I did not expect this. Wow. Hey. Hey, what's up? Are you okay? Is everything all right? Uh, yeah, I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Oh my goodness, I'm just really, really shocked. Have we ever spoken before, Sabrina? No. So you say you did not expect this? No, I did not. I did not expect this. What did you expect? Um, I expected to be, um, you know, just uh, not, you know, picked up on in terms of a call. Interesting. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, what? I mean, just what? You know? Well, why even add? Why even add to that? Why do? Why do I need to? Why do? You know? I think it's a perfect question. What? It has everything that uh, you could possibly want in a question. Why not just leave it at that? I think it's because we always want more. Hmm. We always want more. Do you believe that you want more? Do you want more? Do you have everything that you need or do you want more? I think that I want... I think I want a little bit more out of life. Mm. But that's something that I... That's something that only I can get out of it, you know, by taking opportunities and stuff. You think you want a little bit more out of life. Do you know what it is or do you just have this sort of nameless intangible want I think it's just my intuition that's telling me that mm. intuition is telling you that you want more yeah what do you have um I have a pretty comfortable life tell me about it um well I uh I live in a nice home I that's have good. two Loving, supporting parents. I have a good relationship nice. with my sister. I'm glad I... Awesome. Yeah, things got better. Um, and uh, I have a good group of friends. You're killing it. You got a lot. Mm-hmm. You know, you'll be a lot happier. I've noticed. Hey, I, I, I have this problem, right? Where, you know... You'll be so much happier if you just focus on what you have instead of what you want. But... I think wanting things, it's like, I mean, we get up out of bed in the morning because we want things. If we had everything we wanted, we, 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 uh, what's, the, what's the point of, what, what do we do? There's, I no, think, there's no game. I think, you know, once we have everything that we need, I think that want is that desire to give someone else something. Mm. Do you... Hmm... This is interesting. Do you feel as though it's easier to give people what they want if you already have what you want? If you've filled your own glass? Um, sometimes. Like, whenever people say that, like, um, <clears throat> whenever people say, like, oh, you can't, you know, love someone unless you start loving yourself. I agree like, with that, I, 100%. I, I, well, sometimes I agree with that, but also sometimes I feel like, how how can we know what a true how it's sometimes it's so hard for us to accept self love mm. when we ourselves don't see anything good about ourselves you know if we if it's 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 so easy to say why don't you start loving yourself it's hard to love yourself whenever you don't see anything good that's why I feel like it's whenever someone says that they love you that you can truly start to you know start loving yourself and because they're seeing mm -hmm. that value in you maybe well that's what no, i think I, I i i i hate that though because i i i i hate that that is like you know i hate the idea that you need someone to love you before you love yourself because you know there's no reason for you to be dependent on other people like that you know i feel like that just puts you in a bad spot hmm what do you mean by bad spot I don't know, like, I, f I feel like, I mean, I don't know, this is just my own personal, personal thoughts that I strongly believe in, that, you know, uh, I mean, I, I, I actually, I do think you need to love yourself, not, I don't, I'm not gonna say you need to love yourself before you love other people, but I, I think that, requ 
needing other people to love you before you love yourself is a trap that people people tend to fall into. Uh, where they need other people's validation or they need other people to think that they are something before they can think that they're that thing. Um, hmm. Do you know? It's a trap. It's a skill that a lot of people don't take the time to develop. And they fuck themselves. Maybe they, like, you know, get into a relationship or something. You know, maybe at an early age and they're in it for a long time. You know? And uh, so much of their love for themselves is just a spin-off of their partner's love for them. And then oh, you know, wow. the partner leaves or something. And then they get fucked because they uh, their love for themselves wasn't based off of a, a, a solid internal rock. And they get fucked. And you don't want to get fucked like that, dude. That's why you gotta build that's why you gotta build your rock. You gotta build your internal belief in yourself, your internal love, you know? Hmm. That's very true. Now how exactly one goes about doing that? I don't know. What do you mean? You could, uh, yeah. uh, oh, I'm just thinking out loud. Oh. What? What did you say your name was? Natalie? Sabrina. Sabrina. I like that name. Thanks. Do you like your <laughs> name? Um, I kind of really have like iffy feelings about it because it sounds a lot like my sister's name. So growing up, like my parents would always get our names confused. Mm. Yeah. What do you do, Sabrina? Um, I'm a college student. You're a college student. What do you study? Um, I'm just currently getting my basics down right now. I'm at community college. Um, nice. I'm a liberal arts major. Nice. Uh, do you have any idea what you want to do in life? No, I don't. I'm kind of worried about that. Why are you worried? I, I know I like... Because I know what I don't like, but I don't really know, like... If I want to pursue something that I'm really passionate about, mm. like I really like writing, but I'm, I get a little bit scared about that because, you know, I get very apprehensive as to whether or not I can, you know, continue to have it as a passion if it, if it slowly, you know, becomes something that, you know, is like, you know, a job to make money and it's, you know, something that, you know, no longer becomes a hobby, but... Gets yeah, like we that middle ground. To... Exactly. We were talking to uh, Tiff about this. I don't know if you were there for that. Yeah, yeah. I listened in on Tiff mentioning that. Mm. Yeah, that's a tough but, one. Mm. Yeah, I feel like... One. I feel like... Because, like, I'm only 19. So, like, I feel like people at my age... I feel like we still have... A little bit of time to decide what we want to do for the rest of our lives which sounds a little bit weird considering it's only you know so you know it's you've only been alive for so long so a little bit of time I think you have a lot more than a little bit of time you have actually <laughs> actually the funny part is you have until you are dead damn to do things in the world. I mean, you say you want to write. I mean, you can write at any age. I mean, I don't know. When you're 36 and you decide that writing is stupid and you want to play guitar, you can go play guitar. You know, you can do whatever you want all the time. Kind of. Pretty much. You can pretty much do whatever you want all the time. Unless if you murder someone and go to jail. Or you get pregnant and you're responsible for a child. That's then you well, can't do whatever you want all the time. Then you get fucked. Um, so you can't get pregnant or kill anyone. But other than that, mm. you, if, if, if you don't if you don't if you if you don't have a kid or go to jail, you can pretty much do whatever you want. That is true. That's very true. How do you think this conversation went? You be I, think it went I think it went pretty okay. I think it went pretty good. Pretty well. I mean, I, 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 again, I, I wasn't expecting it. So the surprise element definitely, um, it, it definitely, um, increased my enjoyment. Totally. You were definitely, you definitely started off extremely excited about this. And then as we got more into it, I think your enthusiasm died down 
as you encountered the reality of, you know, what the conversation was? Hmm. Well, I feel like it's because I think I got a little bit more comfortable. Maybe that was it. Totally. Totally. Hmm. Um, that's good, though. Yeah, I guess. Sorry, I, I was looking at the chat. Let me close out of that there. Did you see anything good? Anything interesting no. in there? Yeah. It's whatever. I mean, hey, it's like it's like your caller said earlier, got to do you, you know? Absolutely. I agree with that. Hey, Sabrina, I have one quick question before we go. Yep. What happened? Shit happened. Thank you so much for calling, Sabrina. You have a wonderful rest of the night. It's a pleasure talking to you. You too. Mm hmm. Call from Eli. Eli? <gasps> hey, Gek. How are you, Eli? Good. Elijah? Is that short for Elijah? No. Just Eli. Eli. Elijah um, is the name of the... Oh, you had... You know what? I was going to go on. Here's what... All right. Just now. In ju, like, just now. I said... I said Elijah is the name of... You said... Uh, you were going to say something. I interrupted you. I was going to go on a tangent about how Elijah is the name of like some god or something that you leave the door open to come in to your house during Shabbat. But that would that would have been a stupid thing to say. So I want to let you say the thing that you were going to say when I interrupted you to say that. And actually, my, my explanation probably took longer than what I just said. Especially because what I was going to say, I said it anyway in my explanation. But I want you to ignore the fact that I'm doing what I'm doing right now and say exactly what you're going to say before I interrupted you. Well, I was going to kind of... Um... I think you're wrong about the bet. I'm sorry. <laughs> Eli, I have moved because, past this. Okay. I mean, it was under the assumption that uh, it was the bet was placed on the game that was in the background. So no, it was not under the assumption. I said it was. I said the 1997 Super Bowl. I said we were betting on the 1997 Super Bowl. There's no assumptions to be made when I say specifically I am betting on the 1997 Super Bowl. All right, maybe. I don't know that the caller fully understood that, but... Well, whose fault is that? Yeah, it was a miscommunication, I guess. Maybe. I'm past this. I'm so past this, Eli. <laughs> Eli, I'm curious. Okay. I'm, I'm on the next thing. Have you ever thought about how often we talk in idioms? How often we talk in idioms... So you had two callers both say that they were working or that they were like working as hard as dogs. Yes. Right. One was, one was sick. Then, well, they both mentioned dogs. One was sick as a dog. One was working as hard as a dog. Right. Those are both idioms. Yes. And so many times when we're talking about like games, you know, some people say that they're a real barn burner. What is a? I've never heard that before. It is a barn burner. Oh, it's like a really good game, like a real nail biter. Again, another idiom. Mm. Anyway, I've never heard. Okay, so barn about. burner. Barn burner means a good game. Is it? Mm -hmm. does, bar, or does barn burner mean the same thing as a nail biter? Yes. Do you? I've never heard the barn burner before. Do you know, like, sort of what that? The nail biter, like, you're biting your nails because you're like nervous about what's going to happen. But I don't understand the barn burner one. Yeah, I looked it up once, but I can't remember exactly the etymology of it. What do you, if you had to take a wild guess uh, of, of an explanation of the idiom, how, how do you, what do you, what do you think it means? Well, I don't know. It's like people all would like stand around watching a barn burn because like back in the day, perhaps there wasn't a lot of entertainment. And so if there was a barn burning down... Everyone would like go and watch. Wow, well, that's Maybe. a little sad. That's kind of <laughs> no. I mean, I know. I, th I think you might be right. I think you might be right. A barn burner. I, oh, I like that. Right, people, people. You know, back before there was entertainment, people found entertainment in destruction, which is a very a little sad when you think about it. 
It is sad. Hopefully they got all the animals out. Ah, I feel like they didn't. I feel like that was part of the entertainment for them. Ooh, which makes it even sadder. That would be rough. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I think I... <laughs> I think uh, I think that I've I think we've we've discovered the reason why that's not as as popular of an idiom as a nail biter because it's a little bit dark. Maybe you're probably right on that. What did you say your name was? Eli. Eli, are you competitive? Yes, I'm very competitive, but there's a caveat to it. I'm competitive no. about things that I think I can win. Competitive about things that you think you can win. Mm. Yes. So if there's no chance of me winning, then I don't give a shit. So but, this is interesting because this is sort of uh, uh, builds off of. I don't know if you heard the conversation I just had. Uh, or you did because you brought up the the. Uh, we were talking about ignorance. You you're right. not ignorantly compet. You're not competitive ignorantly because if you were, because you're only competitive at things that you know that you have a shot at winning. Correct. And, like, betting on sports or something, I feel like a lot of that is chance, unless you can develop, you know, some really good mathematical models to potentially predict the outcomes with a higher probability. But, and regardless, you know, that's just chance. So that's not really a competitive thing, I feel like. That's what I said to our very first caller who told us that she was competitive in Monopoly. Yeah, and then, I mean, there is some strategy to Monopoly, though. I guess, I guess there's like, uh, how would you describe the strategy of Monopoly? Because to me, it's all about the dice rolls and who lands on what first. Well, yes, that is a big part of it. But then there's also the strategy of, like, buying only houses so that you can, like, remove anybody else the opportunity to buy houses interesting and the also bank, I'm a can, really can the bank run out of houses is that a thing yes that's a thing i did not know that mm -hmm. what were you gonna say i kind of lost my train of thought i'm sorry is it my fault <laughs> No, no. I don't know if it was about Monopoly or it'll it'll come back to me. Probably after. Right, so you're competitive call. about things that you believe that you have a chance at succeeding in. What are some things that you are competitive about that you believe you have a chance oh. at succeeding in? Okay, sorry, I'm gonna I, I just remembered it. I'm a big rule sure. follower, so hence mm. in Monopoly, then I am competitive like about following rules as well. Because mm. if somebody, like, doesn't follow the same rules or you're not, you know, playing by the same, yeah, by the same rules, then, I mean, it's rigged. <laughs> it's not a fair let competition. Me, let me ask you a question here. Your okay. passion for rule following, does it extend beyond the realm of board games and into life? Were you always really. good at following rules in school, following rules in society? No. <laughs> mm. No. And I think that society has built too many rules that are mm. unnecessary to follow. Mm. So if you can... Uh, here's what I don't get then. If you can admit that some of society's rules are unnecessary, why are you so stubborn on the idea that, you know... Some of Monopoly's rules might be unnecessary, such as the ones that there are a finite amount of houses. Well, they might be, but you have to agree to how you're going to play the game. As as with whoever you're playing the game with. So if, sure. if, you, if everyone agrees to abide by a new set of rules for Monopoly, like free parking and getting cash that's in the middle, then that's an okay rule to... Uh, to institute but as if you don't have that like baseline of everyone having the same expectation and the same rules then it's totally unfair okay so you believe that monopoly's rules are backed by the fact that everyone participating in the game has agreed to the rules before beginning to participate in the game but wouldn't you exactly. say that we live by a social contract that we have all agreed to for example the rule that we can't murder each other by living in a society, we all sort of 
agree to certain rules. Yes, we do. We do. But that's also, you're kind of like going over into like morality. So they're not, they're not rules per se. They're not, well, yeah, I guess they are laws. But do you understand what I mean? Like there's like some laws, like does everyone wear seatbelts? People speed all of the time. Like those are laws. Those are rules. Not everyone abides by them. Do you think that people should speed less? Mm, I don't know. It probably would cause less deaths. It probably would. I mean, it's there for a reason, right? And wearing seatbelts is there for a reason. It's there for people a reason. People choose I not. So theoretically, if I were to right. play a game of Monopoly and, and I wanted to buy a house <laughs> and you said, no, there's no more houses, and I said, we can just use the dog or the iron. And you said, no, that's not part of the rules. I'm like, well, I almost hit an old lady on the way over here because I was going <laughs> 70 miles an hour in a 40. And uh, I broke that rule. So I'm on, a, I'm on a roll right now. I should just break every rule that there is to break that I see in front of me. What would you say right. that? Well, so then that's where my competitive edge would come in and I would start getting really angry at the game. <laughs> I would say, no, that's not fair. <sighs> What did you say your name was? Eli. Eli? Yes. How do you think this conversation went? I think it went great. I had a great time. I think we both heard each other's sides and yeah. I think so too. I think this was a very civil discussion. I agree. You have a wonderful rest of the night. Thank you so much for calling. You too, Yep. Bye. from TV. Uh, hello? Hey. Uh, what's your name, my friend? It's Taylor. Taylor. Taylor, did we, have we spoken before? No, but I comment sometimes. Okay, we have not spoken, but we've commented, so we've engaged in sort of a one-way dialogue, a one-way monologue, a one-way form of communication, one-way conversation of some kind, in a way. Yes. I mean, there's been, like, a quick two-way sometimes, but mostly a one-way, yeah. Uh, what kinds of comments do you leave? Do you leave uh, mean comments, nice comments, neutral comments, a mix of all of them? No, definitely nice. I keep it nice. You keep it nice. Do you ever let anything mean slip? It's hard to be nice all the time. Not on the Twitch, you know? I try to keep it pretty, pretty good on the Twitch. Pretty good on the Twitch. So when you say on the Twitch, does that mean that there are other places in which you do leave mean comments? Maybe even in your head? I mean, in my head, yeah. I'm trying to keep it out of, like, the typing part, but I'm in my head, yeah. Hmm. Hmm. What kind of comments do you think up in your head? In what context? You say you're thinking of mean comments in your head. But so whenever you, uh, you know... Think of something that is not nice or something that is unsavory. You like to keep it in your head. You think to yourself, oh, this would be best if uh, kept to myself and not shared with others. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I try to keep it pretty positive. In general. In general, would you say you're a positive person? I would say in general, yeah. I think everyone, like, it's normal to be a little critical, but those are the things we don't type on Twitch. I like that. Um, mm-hmm. Would you say that your gut reaction, your gut judgment of things is critical and then you th- sort of consciously make aims to be less critical? Or which is commendable, if that is the tra- if that is the case, or is your gut to be positive? Gut's positive. Hmm. You're lucky. Well, has it always been that way, or did you have to train it to be that way? I think it's like a training kind of thing. Mm. I feel like you go like my experience is like junior high. You go through like a part where like 
you start to kind of see other people doing the negative. You kind of、mm. go for the negative a little bit, but then like you learn from that and then you're more positive, you know? Absolutely. Definitely very impressionable at a young age, you know? Hmm. That's why actually, that actually is interesting that you mentioned that because I think about that a lot.、Uh, especially when I see what's popular on the internet, on TikTok.、Uh, negativity. Scarily very popular with the kids these days. Yeah, and also someone, I know I'm not supposed to read the chat. But I just saw someone say, Is this the guy from the hot tub? And I am definitely female. The guy from the hot tub? Oh, is this the guy, the one from the hot tub? I'm not sure what you're talking about. It was just something in the chat, but I don't know. I'm a girl. Other than that, sorry. I got distracted. It's okay. This is the chat, dude. You and me, we're having a chat right now. Yeah, it's true. It's pretty wild. Right? You think it's wild? It is pretty wild. Know, you're, like, you're in like, the States somewhere, I'm guessing. Somewhere, yes. I am.、But、I'm in Canada, which is like. I mean, I'm not the guy in、uh, Turkey or whatever, but. I know, through the, gracious of, through the, through the, through the graces of technology. Um, you know, we're really standing on the shoulders of the giants who came before us. Alexander Graham Bell,、um, Al Gore, who invented the internet.、Um, was that a Nova Scotia reference? Did you know that? I don't know what. That Alexander Graham Bell is from Nova Scotia? No, Alexander Graham Bell invented the telephone. Yeah, and he's from Nova Scotia, which is where I live. Oh, I didn't know that. I thought he was.、Um, I thought he was from America. Actually, I actually didn't think he was from America. I, I, didn't, I never thought about where he was from. I just know who he met the telephone. Fully Canadian, which, I mean, that's where I'm, I'm from Nova Scotia. That's a pretty small place. That was pretty impressive. Taylor, I have a question for you. What happened? What happened? Okay, so the thing that comes to my mind. Do you know how your cell phone, like your, your iPhone, it comes up with these little stories that come up with, like, oh, like here's a time in your life, and it shows these little things in your pictures? Sure, yes, the memories of your pictures. Yeah. I don't know. iPhone does it, Apple, whatever. Yeah. So it came yeah. up with this story that it thought that I wanted, like, picked it from my pictures, put it together into this, like,、mm -hmm. video thing.、Mm -hmm. And it, it picks it from, like, a time in your life,、mm -hmm. and it picked. March 28, 2020, which is the day that my parents' house burnt down. Oh no. So put like a little video together, being like, you're gonna like this. This is your memories. And then that's, that was the day.、Mm. Was there happy music behind it? Yep, totally. Very inspirational. What kind of music did they put behind it? Like that really, like, things are great. Chilling, like very like stock music kind of thing.、Mm. And what was your reaction? um I guess not like surprised. The old Apple, the computer, doesn't really get you, but it's just interesting that I didn't know that, like, you know, house burning down photos were not something I wanted to see, you know? Mm. Do you think it's possible that the iPhone was taunting you? I could see it.、I、Doing could, this yeah. intentionally? Yeah, like, for whatever reason, that just, that's what the computer like, was programmed to do. Hmm. I guess we'll never know. Did you keep the slideshow or did you delete it? I did keep it. It's, you know, 
it's been dramatic, but now I'm just kind of like, that's actually pretty funny. So, pretty cool. It is, it is a little funny in retrospect. Not your parents' burning house burning down, but the fact that your phone made a happy slideshow of it. That's, uh, yeah, I guess so. How do you think this phone call went? Well, the the chap still thinks I'm a guy, so there's that. Taylor! Female Taylor. Taylor! Don't read the chat, Taylor! I know. I know. I should have learned my lesson by now. It's, it's, it's honestly, it's a little rude, Taylor. Like, imagine if we were just talking. You know, face to face, and you were like on your phone, you know, while we we're talking. You know, you're on your computer while we we're talking, just like reading, you know, the text. It's a little rude. Yeah, you're right. I, I mean, I forgive you, Taylor. I believe that you have positive intentions. I believe you're a pure soul. You know, I'm not here to diss you, but. I apologize. Taylor, you never have to apologize to me for anything ever. I appreciate you calling in. You have a great night. You as well. Call from... To accept, press 1. Hello, scholar? Hello? Hey man, I can't hear you at all. You gotta, you gotta either take yourself off speakerphone or speak up, can or you, you know. Now? Can you hear me oh, now? I can hear you. I can hear you a little bit better. What's your name, my friend, my child? I'm Josh. Josh. Josh, you what like size? Uh, how big is your head in comparison to the rest of your body? Um, it's twice as big. Your head is twice as big as the rest of your. Wait, your head is twice as big as the normal head, or twice as big as the size of your body? Both. Look, uh, Josh, just because I asked you a silly question does not give you permission to lie to me. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. My head sorry, is average size. Good. You see, I asked the silly question, and I, and you know, if someone gives me a silly answer, then I know that they're a silly person, that they're a silly guy, and I can tell that you're a silly guy because you gave a silly answer to the silly question. But, you know... Uh, I'm in a serious mood. I'm not in the mood to have a, seri a silly discussion. I was merely a I merely began this discussion silly to kind of feel you out. Make sure that you would be uh, suited to have the kind of serious discussion that I'm interested in having this evening. And I can tell that you are not. So fine, we won't have a serious I, discussion. We can no, have a silly I want to have a serious... Come on, man. This is the second time I got on. I can't believe it. Hey, I have a question for you. What happened? What happened or what happened? I have a question for you, Josh. Oh. What happened? Life. What about life? It happens. Did it happen today? Yeah. It what did. happened today? In life. You know, death, death happened in my life recently. Hmm. We talk about that. Sorry to hear that. Yeah, so last can I tell a story real quick? Sure. Why not? So last time I called you I played the ukulele, right? I don't know if you remember that. You like played the ago. ukulele. Was this while I was asleep? No. You were awake. You were I saw that that sleeping stream. That shit was awesome. Mm. Alright, so last time you called you played the ukulele. And then, so my friend was over, his name is Johnny, and we were getting certified to be welders, to weld metal, right? And he's a certified welder, uh, welding inspector. And I was talking to you on the phone with him, and about a week later, well, I don't know, about three days later, he passed away. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, man. It's kind of reminding me, like that's why it kind of called you, is because last time I, I talked to you, he was he was here, actually at my did, house. Did I talk to him? No, he was in he was in the garage. 
I was talking to you on the phone and we were getting, it was kind of later, but we were, he was certifying us to get uh, welding uh, certified, uh, you know, welders, three of us. Mm. I'm a, I'm a large scale sculpture artist. So I do like big metal um, sculptures. And uh, so I needed to be certified for this project. And he was over at the house. And um, that was the last time I saw him. Hmm. That was about three to four weeks ago. How are you feeling since? You know, I was kind of, I was angry at first. I was angry at a lot of people. I'm not as angry anymore, but, uh, you know, I do miss him for sure. What do you make metal sculptures of? I'm a big Burning Man sculpture artist. Um, Interesting. I've done some of the biggest uh, sculptures at Burning Man over the last 20 years. And I'm a professional sculpture artist with... Uh, like commercial commissions and I'm an architect too. That's cool. I uh yeah. I was actually thinking I was looking into Burning Man recently. I think it would I, I, I don't know a lot about it, but someone told me that I could set up a therapy gecko tent. I have Dude, no idea what that be, means. Yep. So there's a big city, you know, that everybody camps at at Burning Man and yeah. that's where everybody kinda lives in the city and People will do that in camps. They'll have like events and bars and, you know, um, TED Talks and kind of lectures. I mean, anything goes at Burning Man, really. But yeah, that would definitely go. Really okay, well maybe I'll do Man. that. That sounds kind of fun. Yeah. So yeah, I've been going out to Burning Man for over 20 years and made like a you know, four story glass and steel jellyfish, 20 foot robot, you know, 20 foot mm. tall robot, and a bunch of other stuff. When but is the he, next. Oh, what were you going to say? Oh, uh, I was going to say my friend who passed away, he was also. Um, he went to Burning Man with us and he helped us build a lot of these big projects. Nice. Are you planning on building something for him? Yes. So what I have a robot. Well, I have a robot that he worked on. It's called iRobot. And it was at Burning Man 2018 in the center camp. And he helped weld it. And I want to, it's in my front yard right now. And I think I'm going to, um, it's going to get installed in California, hopefully. Pretty soon. I'm from Nevada. That sounds awesome. And, uh, yeah, I want to definitely honor him. His name was uh, Johnny. And uh, he he helped us a lot in, in our community to, you know, build really big art and uh, yeah I definitely need to uh, I want to honor him several ways with that piece and I have another piece um, that I've started working on to memorialize him is this this piece this robot piece is it going to be at the next Burning Man or are you um, putting it up somewhere in California or is Burning I'm Man in California at, well Burning Man got cancelled again this year because of COVID mm. just got canceled like a week ago. Uh, no, like three or four days ago. And so there's no Burning Man this year. Um, I probably won't go back to Burning Man, honestly, again. Um, Why not? It's a little corrupt. Corrupt? Um, yeah. How is it corrupt? <laughs> it may be pretty controversial. I don't know. <laughs> I have my opinions. Interesting. Burning Man, a lot of people think it's just a bunch of naked people, you know, running around in the desert doing drugs and, you know, fucking each other. Oh, can I say that? I can't you can say, say whatever you want, dude. <laughs> it's, 
it kind of is, you know. Um, a lot of seedy stuff goes on at Burning Man. Mm. Do, in, in, is your perception of it sort of more spiritual and less uh, let's all get naked and do drugs in the desert? It's the biggest art show in the world. So that's mm. why I've gone for the last 20 years. Uh, mm. For the art, strictly for the art. Mm. You know, I go there every year to build. You know, it's the hardest place to do art. Honestly, you know, I'm a, I do public amenity art. Um, you know, sculpture, public art. So, doing art outside is challenging. You know, large scale art, and then doing it in the middle of the desert is even more the hardest place to do art i i think so um i go strictly to build some of the biggest art in the world and to design it what did you say your name was josh 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 listen before we go i'm curious is there anywhere that we can find your art are you on instagram you got a website you got something i'd love to see your sculptures uh, yeah um I got, I'm a little weird, so I got rid of my social media. I just got on Twitch. I got my own Twitch, Josh Vale Artist. Josh um, Vale Artist? Yep. Oh, I just think like I saw my... you, I saw you in the chat saying I don't have any ears. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, that's me. So, Josh and I, do you have an email too? Do I have an email? Yeah, well, I could email you. Yeah. Yep. Try I don't do there. social media, and I've been twitching a little bit lately. I love Twitch. Yeah, well, I don't know if you're live, but we'll have to raid you sometime. I want to see that you're build, like building sculptures on there or something. Yeah, yeah, I'm okay, building. Uh, yeah, building like an eight ton dream catcher right now, uh, made out of steel. With an uh, eight four ton dream, that's like the size of that's like two cars. <laughs> Forty feet long. It has four hundred pound feathers. Twenty four of them. Jesus, the feathers that are made awesome, out of actually. steel. So yeah, I'll, um, that'd be cool if you, yeah, rated me sometime. Because yeah, <laughs> I have email. zero followers. <laughs> yeah, hit me up, dude. I'm I'm Lyle Forever Endeavor at Gmail dot com. Anyone that goes for anyone, dude. I'm Lyle Forever and Ever at Gmail dot com. But yeah, dude, listen, Josh, it was a pleasure, uh, a pleasure getting to speak with you. I'm sorry for your loss, and it sounds like you're doing a lot of uh, really interesting stuff. I'm excited to go Thanks check brother. it out. You have a good rest of the night. Of course. All right. Thanks, bye. Call from Isaira. Isaira? 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 Hello? <laughs> How are you, Isaira? Can you hear me? Uh, Yeah, what's up? Hi, how are you? I'm doing the best I can. I'm a gecko on the computer. Yeah, I see. <laughs> what, um, what's your ultimate goal in life? What do you want to do before you die? Um, I would love to... That's a good question. Um, I would love to, um, perform on stage... Because I'm like a singer, so I would love to perform on stage at like a big concert event like Coachella or something mm. in front of like thousands of people. Mm. You're a singer. What kind, what kind of music do you sing? I write, I write songs about like love, the typical stuff. <laughs> songs about love. Are these songs about love? Are they inspired by your own personal experiences with love? Yes, they are. All of them are. <laughs> and are they that's about? Like... Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh no, yeah. All of my songs are inspired from my experiences with love and heartbreak and stuff. Mm, so this is all. My question was going to be: Is it, so it's all romantic love? Uh, yeah, romantic, bad relationships, toxic love, all of it. Hmm. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> now Adele, she's always writing yeah. about her heartbreak, right? 
Yes, I love a her. A lot of people, a lot of people have speculated that uh, you know Adele actually actively seeks out heartbreak to give. Oh, wow. uh, you know, they've said this about Taylor Swift too. They actively, <laughs> d intentionally sabotage their own relationships to gain fodder <laughs> for their wow. for their art, which of course. Is ridiculous. I also made that up just now. Yeah. No one actually thinks that. But I mean, that's a ridiculous thing that a lot of people think. And I'm curious: is that what do you think? Is that true? For, for um, you personally, as someone who who mines a similar place for material? No, I don't think anyone would actually go and like sabotage their relationship to make a song about it. I know I wouldn't, but that's that's pretty crazy if someone would. <laughs> You know, another thing that I find interesting about artists who mine their emotions um, for their art is that emotion is very intense and very fleeting, mm -hmm. very sort of in the moment. It doesn't last very long. And, and for you to take, I mean, for you to transmute these very raw feelings of uh, you know anger and sadness and and put okay. them into a song i mean you've you've got to you got to take that raw feeling and it's got to go from writing to recording to mixing to sitting with a dude <laughs> in a booth going to, uh, how do we do with the levels and shit to this yeah. to that to put it on instagram you know how do you how do you how do you keep focused on on what really matters through that whole process absolutely i just always remember uh like why i'm doing this and like why i'm sharing my story because i want people to hear and i know people can relate so i always remember that and like i love music so writing lyrics and uh talking about my experiences through music is like the best thing i could do for myself and other people so mm. Have you have you performed live before? Have you ever performed in front of uh, people? Yeah, I have many times. Yeah, and it's always been great, but I haven't performed anywhere recently because of COVID. Mm -hmm. Like, very soon, I will. <laughs> and I'm, like, working on a song right now that I plan on releasing in June, so I'm pretty excited. That's awesome. I'm going to annoy you about this. Are you, are you on TikTok? Uh, yes, I'm on TikTok and Instagram. My Instagram is tbh.memories. tbh.memories, okay. Yeah, and then my TikTok is like linked in like my bio and my Instagram, so you can just find it there. Okay, cool. Uh, the reason I was asking is because I feel like if I were, you know, trying to, uh, you know, if, if you're trying to do anything, but a lot, specifically if you're trying to be a musician, I feel like TikTok is the number one way to go to get your stuff out there. Yeah, I always post on TikTok too, like my singing videos and whatnot. What did you say your name was again? Isaira. Isaira, <laughs> are you competitive? Um, not really, no. Depending on what it is, I might be, but overall, no, not really. <laughs> Even in your music career, would you consider yourself to be competitive? Um, no, I just, I just love music and I do it because I love it. I'm not trying to like, uh, be like, um, on top of anyone or anything like that. Like, I just do it. I love it. So, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. You know, the cool thing about music as opposed to, I think about this a lot, the thing about, you know, music and the arts that has an advantage over something like sports uh for instance is there can be multiple f amazing musicians there can be infinite musicians of infinite genres all you know you can build your own following and you can one person can like many different musicians but you know let's say if you want it to be like like if you want it to be the champion heavyweight boxer right mm -hmm. or something like that there can only be one it's directly mm -hmm. competitive. This is not a, a, a mixed market. So it's, it's an advantage. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I understand that, but... Well, listen. 
Is is Ira? Yes. <laughs> is Ira? This is a pleasure talking to you. What'd you say? What, what was your What was your Instagram again? I want to. I'm gonna go check you out. <laughs> a tbh dot memories. Tbh dot memories. Awesome. Yes. Thank you so much for calling in, Zyra. You have a wonderful rest of the night. You too. Call from Trey Wan. Trey Wan. Hey, what's up, man? Trey Wan, I need you right now. You need me right now? What do you need, I need from me? You right now. I don't. I don't know exactly what it is, but it's just your presence. You're giving me everything uh, I need from you right now. How you doing, Trey Wan? Uh, I'm pretty good, but I, I think I have a deeper problem than that. Are you gonna? All right. What's 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 up, man? What's the problem? So, um, let's keep this uh, PG, and let, let's just say, um, uh, I think I'm addicted to like XXX videos. Oh. And I just I just can't seem to stop. You're addicted to pornography. Yes, indeed. How old are you? I am 20 years old. You're addicted to pornography. Um, <clears throat> what makes you say that you're addicted to pornography? Um, I do it like approximately like nine times a day. Really? Not you? Do you, you really jack off nine times a day? Yeah, about sometimes even twelve. Let me. Ask, are, are are you the same? A long time ago, like six months ago, I had someone call in and and say the same exact thing. Are you the same person? Have you called in before? I wish I was, but that's not me. I need help. Okay, does it help, how does it make you feel that someone else has had this exact same issue that you have? Uh, I makes me feel welcoming that uh, there's people out there like me. Look, I'm going to be honest with you. I will treat this the same no matter what you answer this. I swear to God. I swear to God. If you say yes, I, I swear to God, we're going to have the exact same conversation than if you said no. But are you being serious right now? I am being serious right now. Okay. Well, uh, what makes what what what, do you, what makes porn an addiction? What do you think? Uh, you know, like it's I don't I don't even think it's uh, it's porn anymore. I think it's just the satisfaction of just releasing all the stress. Mm. Yeah, and you know, I look, just, I've been there. I'm glad, but um, it's getting bad. Like. It's like I'll be out in public, and I would, I would, I would be thinking about it. Like I'd be going, like, damn, I could be home right now, doing my own thing. Mm, yeah. Have you, let me, have you spoken to a real therapist about this? I have not. You should do that. You should see what they say. Um, hmm. You know what? What, what I, kind I of therapist? Like, I mean, just any sort of regular therapist. But <laughs> have you ever gone? You ever gone to therapy? I've never gone to therapy. You should try it. You see what they have to say. I, I'd be curious what a professional's opinion is um, on this situation. As an unprofessional lizard douche, um, I found that the le d w the frequency with which I masturbate directly correlates. It correlates inversely with the amount of stuff I have to do. So, if you're jacking off nine times a day, you must have a lot of time on your hands. I do. I, I, I kind of, like, go at it back to back sometimes, which is really just not healthy, but it's like I just have that urge. See, I, I think that your main focus in coming over this problem is going to have to be in finding something to replace masturbation with. Um, that also gives you feelings of, of chemicals and feelings of flow. Do you know what flow is? Yes. You, you familiar with the idea of flow? Like you're f completely focused on the activity that you are in the in the pres is in the in the process of doing. Yes. You got to find activities that give you flow. Um, doing that is difficult, but I think that that is sort of going to be the key to solving your issue is finding things to replace masturbation with. Because if you're just trying to quit cold turkey, like, y you need something productive to replace the habit with. Or else you're, that's yeah. that's where I think you're going to start doing it nine times a day. Because that's when I, that, 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 those are the times when I'm, like, masturbating, like, five times a day is when I don't have anything to do. You know, you got to start filling your plate with stuff. Okay. I appreciate it. Yeah, I'm gonna, yeah for sure, man. I'm going to start going to the gym and uh, distract my mind off porn and releasing like my uh, stress a different way. 
Is there anything you could think about that, you know, maybe would fit under the category of, of you know, hobbies or projects that you could work on or just anything that you could be doing that's not masturbating? Um, no, no, not really. I kind of just go on TikTok and um, just kind of do school. That's about it. I feel like the school part plays a very big role in this. Well, I guess it's stressing you out. Uh, I guess because I just get bored. Like, I'll be studying for, like, hours, and I'll just be like, I'm bored, let's just go. And then, uh, you know, an, an hour passes, and I'll be like, ah, let's just go again. And then, you know, another yeah. hour. And it, it, just goes, it just goes by like that. It just goes really quick. Yeah, man, listen, if school's not interesting you, I think, you know, you know, like I've said, I'm kind of repeating myself here, but, you know, um, definitely go out in search of, of, of something that puts you in that flow state. So that you're not, you know, consistently masturbating all day. Perfect. Thank you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try that. Of course, man. What did you say your name was? Uh, Trey. Thank you so much, Trey. You have a wonderful rest of the night. I wish you good luck. You too, man. Take care.